Wow, Monday morning. Welcome to the That's Good Sports Podcast Monday review of the NFL and the Broncos game. I'm Brandon Perna here with the guy named... Uh, Will Keys. What's Will up? Keys. Will Keys. Uh, yeah, this is the That's Good Sports Podcast, uh, and we're recapping what we, what we saw happen in NFL Sunday, Monday morning. And... Uh, we're on iTunes and Podbean and all that bullshit. You know, you should give us a rating on iTunes and download it or whatever. But uh, it's it's not that early, Will. But I'm going to say my back, my lower back went out yesterday. And, you know, it is it's not feeling good right now. So you're going to have to carry this. You're going to have well, to carry the load today. Yeah, I'll put the team on my back. What was it uh, precisely? Was it like doing a recap video? Was it like jumping up and down during the game? What's the it, deal? It's It's been tight for like three weeks because I sit on my ass and edit for – or work on videos for 12 hours a day. And so yesterday morning it was tight and I just like bent down to try to start stretching my, my hammies and uh, it was not good. It's not good. Wow. I actually – yeah – um, just since we're on the topic of injuries, I actually pulled my hamstring last week. Ooh. Um, running, I was I was playing catch, and so naturally, <laughs> I got injured in a non-contact environment. And uh, like, I got invited out to uh, go get drinks afterwards, and um, I still went. I I iced <laughs> up. I still went. So it's basically me, and then second is Philip Rivers in the AFC Championship game. There you go. We're both playing. I, we're both playing injured today. Did you? Did it bruise up? Did you get bruising? I didn't see any bruising. No. No, it's not bad. Okay. <laughs> it's not bad. It was you not can, bad. You can play through it. If if you were on a team, they would make you go out there and play, even though like yeah, hamstrings, probably. like three giant muscles coming together, and when you do pull it, it's like the one thing you just want to let rest. And players try to play through it all the time, and just makes them injured longer. It's a good strategy. Um, yeah, I had to take some mu- a, a muscle relaxer last night because I have them for this issue when it does happen. And those things just fucking – I hate taking them because today I just feel like I just want to sleep forever. I think that's called death. <laughs> You're right, actually. Yeah. I want to die. Like that, does it? <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's get into the games. Nobody gives a fuck about our personal lives. It's true. Uh, where where are we starting today? What are we starting with? Uh, let's start with all the terrible kickers because that covers a few games. It's a gamut. So the most notable one, I think, uh, was the Minnesota Green Bay game that was tied because of three missed kicks. So Kirk Cousins and Aaron Rodgers had a nice little shootout. Kirk Cousins looked really, really good at the end through a couple of uh, longer touchdowns. One to Diggs, one to Thielen. Uh, and then Mason Crosby had a chance to win it on the last play of regulation. And Mike Zimmer iced him. Yeah, he Made did the make first it. Kick, missed the second kick. They went to overtime. Daniel Carlson for the Vikings, the rookie kicker, misses two kicks. Two kicks, right, in overtime? Uh, I don't know. Are they both in overtime? I, I'm going to say yes. He missed. He definitely missed three on the day, and he definitely missed the 35-yard game winner. Yep. So, um, not a great look for uh for old Daniel Carlson. No, and he was a guy they drafted too. Correct. Yeah. I just found it weird that they like the Vikings were able to draft the most Nordic kicker possible. <laughs> But they <laughs> they find a way. But anyway, we get the second tie in the first two weeks of the season. Yeah, so, just a, be- a beautiful tie. Great. Like, you need a tie every week in the NFL. It's funny because I was like – I was just trying to double-check the uh, the Vikings kicker's name because I couldn't remember it. And if you, yeah. if you just put in Vikings kicker, Kai Forbath comes up, Blair Walsh comes up, then Ryan Longwell comes up. And then it starts moving on to just Morton Anderson, Stephen Hauschka. Those are like the first things. So the, his, name doesn't even, you know, his name doesn't even show up if you just Google search Vikings kicker. Maybe um, uh, the Vikings are trying to erase any sign that he ever existed. Yeah. That game was crazy. Um, 
it basically went into overtime, though, because uh, the refs called a roughing the passer penalty on Clay Matthews, which was yep. it was just a bullshit call. Like, it, it looked like a bullshit call. There's all these all these analysts are going to say, uh, well, you know, at first it looked like Clay Matthews lifted and slammed him in the ground type thing. It never fucking looked like that at all. It looked like a, he hit him right in the middle of the waist right after he throws the ball. So he's not late. He hits him where he's supposed to hit him. And then he falls on him on the way to the ground. And he didn't even, like, drive his body into him. It's a, it's a bullshit call. Clay Matthews was baffled by it afterwards, and rightfully so. Uh, and if they did not call that penalty, that was a third down stop for the, Vic- or for the Packers. And yep. uh, the game went, went into overtime. Um, so there was, there was that. And then, yeah, Mason Crosby misses a, a game winner and the Vikings, uh, kicker misses a, a chip shot game winner. And that's why I gave Brandon McManus part of the big dick player award yesterday. Cause his game winner was 36 yards. And you, you think, Oh, that's an easy kick. But after what we, we witnessed all day, yesterday, was, yeah. no guarantees. I was not feeling great about that after what I had seen from three or four games earlier. And I would like to pat ourselves on the back here because I believe before any of this shit happened, we were talking about Dan Bailey not having a job in the NFL, and he is the hottest free agent name today for people looking for uh, kickers who won't fucking choke. I believe oh, 19, yeah. 19 field goals uh, were missed yesterday. I think field goals are extra points total. So. That's, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, no, Dan Bailey definitely has like those cartoon dollar signs in his eyes right now. Yeah, because uh, he's probably his phone's just got to be ringing off the hook. Like the the Browns are probably calling him, the Vikings maybe. Uh, but yeah, that guy is in a position to like start a bidding war between like five different NFL teams right now and make bank. Yeah, it's like um, you just think about being Dan Bailey today, where you know you're one of the best in the business, and you've gone. Uh, like three weeks with nobody calling you and now you're in the situation where there's some desperate teams are going to need your help. Like I would, I would be so, I would want to take everything I could from whichever team, you know, makes me an offer. I'd be like, fuck every team in the NFL for not having me. I'm a top five player at my position. (laughs) Uh, you want me? It's gonna cost you yeah. max. Max. He's the amount. second second most accurate kicker of all time behind Justin Tucker. That's just wild that he's not employed. He's not old too. He's like thirty, around there. Uh, the Cowboys just didn't want to pay him like three million dollars or whatever. Yeah, stupid. So, which is pretty ridiculous because kickers are in fact important as we very important multiple times. They became more important when they moved the stupid extra points back too. So yeah. All right, so yeah. that's our, our kicker takes. Nothing like right. starting the podcast off talking about kickers, people's favorite sexy position. Mm-hmm. Next to punters and long snappers. Um, so Cleveland, it looked like they were going to get their first win since December of 2016. And sure enough, they, <laughs> they snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. The Saints come back. Uh, speaking of kickers, Zane Gonzalez missed, what was it, three field goals and two extra points? I think two field goals, two extra points, I think. Okay. Yeah, no, that sounds right. That sounds right. Misses the game winner. Uh, Tyrod Taylor. That's didn't eight points. Their... Yeah. <laughs> they lost by three, by the way. Um, they were up for most of the game. I think it was 12 to three that they led for a while in New Orleans. So they put on a pretty good defensive performance, uh, but they couldn't close it out, which is vintage Browns. Yeah, um, kind of similar to the way the Broncos game played. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the Saints weren't able to really do anything for the first half of that game. Uh, like you said, they were down, what, 12-3. to 3. The Broncos were down 12-0 to 0 at halftime. So, um, yeah, even if – well, I mean, obviously, if the kicker makes all of – if the Browns kicker makes all of those kicks, they win. But I think the big one was uh, missing the extra point which would have given the Browns a 19-18 lead. Uh, but obviously the Browns' defense couldn't stop the, the Saints. Uh, yeah, it would have I mean, the, it's like if Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, or Tom Brady, if, they, any of, if any of those three quarterbacks have the ball in their hand with 
a minute left in the game and your team only needs a field goal to win, I almost guarantee those teams are going to win. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would bet on that scenario 99% of the time for one of those those guys to win. You have to be up by a touchdown, I feel like, because those guys getting like 40 yards is nothing. That's two right. passes for them that they – they're just going to do because they're in a hurry up offense. The defense plays prevent and they're just going to shred you. So uh, mm-hmm. I don't think him missing that extra point would have saved the team. He definitely needed to make those other kicks earlier, but that's the one that I think everybody's going to look at. Yeah. And t- so Tyra Taylor looked pretty bad for most of the game to be completely honest. Uh, but he threw a beautiful touchdown pass on fourth and five, I think, to Antonio Callaway, that was just a rainbow that looked like it was never going to come down, and it finally landed in the back of the end zone. Callaway gets both feet down. Uh, looks like they're on their way to the first win, and then, like you said, Zane Gonzalez misses the extra point. Saints drive back down. Yeah, that eight. that that game-tying touchdown, what it ended up being anyway, was yeah. that was a beautiful play. Like uh, It was. That was very impressive. And Tyrod, like – that's been my my take on him when he throws the deep ball. Those balls go high and they they float mm-hmm. for a long time. Whatever he does with them, they 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 hang in there. So, and seeing the Brown Saints eighteen eighteen at the end of the game, I wanted another. I wanted a back to back tie because I predicted that, <laughs> and uh, I, I thought maybe it could happen. But instead, that mm-hmm. was the Packers Vikings. Close. So those were probably the most ex- two ex- most exciting games, the, the Vikings, yeah. Packers, Saints, Browns. And the Browns should just be happy that they played back-to-back very exciting games that everybody's talking about. I mean, it, no, they actually did look pretty good, uh, especially on defense for a, a good portion of the game. It's just at the end, you knew it was going to happen. I think everybody in the stadium knew it was going to happen. Uh, Drew Brees – you can't really hold them down for that long, especially when you're not putting up points on offense. Like you have to put that team away and they couldn't oh, do you it. Do. You, like I said, you need to be up by more than three at the end. Mm. And they certainly were not. Um, yep. a, lot, a team that did score a lot of points, uh, two teams that scored a lot of points, the chiefs and the Steelers. And they played each other. They sure did. <clears throat> uh, the final score is 42 to 37. Um, Patrick Mahomes, who everybody knows, I'm a big fan of. Uh, I've always, I've long said that uh, he's one of my favorite players. Through six touchdowns, so he's got ten touchdown passes in the first two games. Uh, that's the most to start a season ever. Yeah, Peyton Manning in 2013 had nine. That surprised me. Holmes beat it. Yeah, he's I, got ten. Yeah, because Manning in 2013 threw seven touchdowns week one, and then just three week two. So Mahomes did a six and a four, or a four and a six anyway. Yeah. Um, are you walking back your take that he is uh, overrated? Nope. <laughs> I can't do it. Fraud. <laughs> it's yeah. September. It's the Chiefs in September. He and looks good. Knows they're going to be lighting up the scoreboard until it gets slightly colder and defenses start to figure them out a little bit. And it doesn't seem like they're really running the ball very much. Uh, so I'm just – I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Uh, I'm just going to – I'm going to die on this hill probably. Yeah, you you are. You're going (laughs) to die alone on that hill. Um, Fine. I think, I guess, like if you're a Broncos fan and you're hoping that Patrick Mahomes isn't that great. That's not me. I just know he's not that good. The only two things you can really (laughs) look at are week one, they play a Chargers team without Joey Bosa. Uh, They do play well, but – you know, there was some uh, a special teams play and one big play by Tyreek Hill, and it's week one. Week two, you just have to start to believe that the Steelers' defense is horrible. That's like the only way you can say, okay, maybe he's not as good as they look. But really, he's playing well with That's Andy sure. Reid. He's playing very well. And the question now is, is it going to happen where teams actually sort of start to figure him out and know how to game plan against him? Like, how big is that actually a factor? You hear it every year with young quarterbacks, and you hear veteran players or analysts say, yeah, yeah, once they get enough tape on him, they'll, they'll know how to, you know, slow him down. I don't know how true that is. Uh, I guess I believe it. 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, look at uh, Deshaun Watson through the first two games of the season. He's 0-2. He looks like he's slowing down a little bit from where he was. I mean, that might be uh, a result of coming back from his injury, but – Yeah, I think – As good as he was last year. Through that, the first yeah, then that, that could be true. But that situation is a little bit different. Yeah. Um, the Chiefs definitely have a lot of weapons, but Alex Smith looked – great last year at this time i think his mm-hmm. during his week one performance against the patriots alex smith threw for a hundred more yards than patrick mahomes and had a 70 percent completion rate so and the chiefs did look good in september last year uh i think i think their offense is going to continue to look good i think patrick mahomes is going to continue to look good i don't know what his ceiling is or how great he really is but they did give up a lot of points to the Steelers. So I still think their defense is a question mark. But if your offense is scoring 40 points every week, your defense doesn't need to be that good. And by virtue of playing with a lead, they're going to give up yards and plays. Um, but uh, I think just as a team overall, they're going to be interesting to watch for the next few weeks to see uh, if Mahomes continues with this record setting touchdown pace he's on or if things start to slow down a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm hoping and praying that it's the latter for the sake of not only the Broncos, but also my own credibility. Right. Of which there's very little to begin with. So. And, yeah, well, the Chargers got a, a victory over the Bills, which we both they definitely did. predicted. Um, did. Easy prediction there. The the Bills are so bad that their corner, their starting corner, Vontae Davis, just fucking quit at halftime. Just retired. Said, no, nope, I'm done. I'm not playing anymore. Uh, I don't know what, which move is more badass. Vontae Davis retiring at halftime or Ryan Fitzpatrick coming out in his press conference wearing Deshaun Jackson's clothes. Um, oh, man. It's hard to top Fitzpatrick. Both baller moves, though, for different yeah. reasons. Yeah, I mean, with Vontae Davis, like, you kind of have to respect it a little bit, just waiting until all of his money becomes guaranteed, uh, realizing that he's on the worst team probably of the 2018 season, and then just dipping out at halftime, giving him, giving him the old Irish goodbye. See you fuckers yeah. later. I'm out. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I was thinking, like, after the game, looking at Derek Carr's completion percentage, like, ooh. 90. The Broncos might want to give Vontae Davis a call, talk him out of retirement. No shit. They're uh, they're second. We'll get to the Broncos though. Yeah. They're secondary, a uh, little questionable. We'll get there. A little bit. Um. So, Broncos win. Chiefs win. They're both two and two. The top of the AFC West. Raiders get a. Our uh, Chargers get a win. They're one and one. And Raiders are zero and two. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we get into the Broncos game, uh, the I do have to just say that. Jacksonville Jaguars beat the Patriots yesterday. They sure did. Just as I predicted and hoped they would. Uh, And they they beat them handily. And it is week two for the Patriots. So the opposite of the Chiefs. Anytime you want to get a win against New England, September's a good time to do it. Uh, But the Jags just look like a better team. Like, it just looks like they have more talent all around. Mm -hmm. Um and their their defense slowed the Patriots offense down. You know, like that game was what twenty four to three in the second half or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, they the final score looked a lot closer than the game actually was. Uh Brady had a couple of kind of garbage time touchdowns to Chris Hogan. Uh but I think it showed like the, the Patriots don't really have any playmakers at wide receiver that can match up with guys like Jalen Ramsey and AJ Boye, and yeah. anyone in the in the Jacksonville defense, aside from Gronk, I guess he didn't really do anything. Uh, true to Jalen Ramsey's prediction. Yeah, and uh, Ramsey wasn't didn't even cover him during the game, I believe. So that was yeah. Gronk being covered by mostly, I think, their linebackers and safeties. Which, if you have a team that has the talent to cover Gronk with with those positions and actually cover him, you can have success. Um, when the Broncos beat the Patriots on their Super Bowl run, both in the regular season, well, in the regular season, they did not do a good job covering him, but they had uh, TJ Ward fill in on that role. And it wasn't like he was great, but he did a good enough job. He was able to be physical enough with Gronk to 
kind of slow him down. So the Jags defense is real. Blake Bortles played a hell of a game too. Like yep. Blake Bortles looked like a good fucking quarterback, uh, which Jalen Ramsey adamantly uh, made a point to uh, discuss after the game. So Jags look legit. Uh, Vikings look pretty good still. Um, I thought they were going to handle that game a little better. I think yeah. the Packers, you, could be, you can be excited about their defense because until later in the game, they played pretty well against what I think is a very good Vikings offense. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers look fucking real. The Bucks sure look real with Ryan Fitzpatrick, and nothing will make me happier if Jameis Winston does not ever get his job back there. Two reasons, because I think he's a shitty person and because I love Ryan Fitzpatrick. If he does not relinquish that job, Fitzpatrick with weapons out his ass right now, Mike Evans, Deshaun Jackson, O.J. Howard, like, I just want to see him light it up. I want to see the Buccaneers in the playoffs. And right now, the Dolphins 2-0, Jags 2-0, and Tampa Bay 2-0. And if two people have been kind of critical of Florida football teams it has been us, Will. A little bit. A little we, bit. Yeah. We're we, not have both said that we, we have both said, uh, I think that Teddy Bridgewater, we talked about he should go to Tampa yeah. Bay or even Jacksonville. Said, yeah. I think I said Jacksonville. <laughs> so uh, we're looking wrong there. And mm, I will say that so. Dolphins look decent. They beat yeah. Akeem Tlaib's uh, AFC East playoff pick, the Jets. And, and they – they Adam Gase is coaching the team well. And so it's like – magical what he could do when he does not have Jay Cutler as his fucking quarterback. Yeah, no, uh, Ryan Tannehill looks pretty solid. He threw a touchdown pass to our old friend, AJ Derby yesterday. Oh, Derby. I didn't yeah. see that. He oh. got in the end zone. Nice. So I was like, wow, that's, that's kind of, it's called coming around full circle to see Adam Gase and, and AJ Derby yeah. making it, making it work in Miami. But yeah, the Florida teams look good. I want an all Florida Super Bowl. I want Fitzpatrick Bortles. Jags, uh, Tampa. That would yeah. be they wouldn't have to go far. The the Super Bowl's in Atlanta, so it'd be a short trip for both of them. Uh I think it would be one of the greatest shootouts in Super Bowl history. America would hate it, but you and I are all aboard the Florida Super Bowl. Atlanta, they gotta win. Um yep. the Cowboys beat the the Giants on Sunday night football. I indeed I backed the Giants two weeks in a row and you know they did not look indeed. good. I mean Eli Manning just had no time to ever throw the ball. So their improved offensive line still needs some some work. Uh, yeah, saw Cody Latimer make a big catch down the yeah. sideline. See lats. Well, and a little, too little the, too late. The announcer said that uh Peyton Manning was the one who whispered to Eli Manning that he would be a, a good receiver to grab. Which I don't know why that makes sense at all. <laughs> which is interesting because the whole time Latimer was here with Peyton Manning the media's take on it was that Latimer wasn't smart enough to play with Peyton and yeah. Peyton didn't like him because he couldn't pick up his offense or, you know, was never in sync with him. So to hear that Manning recommended him to Eli from the Sunday night football crew. Interesting. What do I believe? I don't know. I think everybody just makes shit up is what I'm. Yeah. Thinking. Oh, absolutely. They, they love to. Um, yeah, no, I'd love to see him become like a, a viable option in New York because he's he's got the talent and he's going to get a lot of single coverage when he's playing with Odell Beckham on the other side. So I could see it happening. Yeah, Beckham and even Sterling Shepard is like your yeah. number two and you're kind of your, the slot guy there. Like it's a good place for him to be. So yeah, I, I'm rooting for his success. I root mm -hmm. for everybody's success except for anybody that plays for the Patriots. So correct. Hey. Um, so a good day for you yesterday. Great day. Because let's, none of them had success. Let's get into the Broncos now because that's let's why we're here. And yep. Patriots lose, Raiders lose, Broncos win. I tweeted that's a perfect Sunday. <laughs> um, and we got one tie, which really makes it a perfect, perfect Sunday. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess there's a lot to digest here. Why don't you give me your initial thoughts on the game first? All right, so obviously the offense couldn't do much of anything in the first half, and they got killed in time of possession. I think it was like 22-8 to eight in the first half in terms of uh, time of possession for the Raiders and the Broncos. Um, but once they got it going on that first drive of the second half, you kind of feel like anything's possible. 
and they were going to turn it around. Although after that Seth Roberts touchdown, they kind of – I was like, ooh, they might be dead in the water here. I did not expect the Raiders to, to come back and respond like that. With a quick uh, but, touchdown. Yeah, no, credit Case Keenum for throwing that pick early like Red he did last zone, week. Yeah. Red zone pick. Not just an interception. Right. Taking, taking what could points have been seven off. points but was definitely three points off the board. Yeah. Point being, though, he fought back again, and he, he drove the team down the field four times for points in the second half, uh, all four of their drives. And, yeah, from the third quarter to the fourth quarter, resulted in points, uh, including the game winner, which was really a, a nice drive by Keenum. Hit Tim Patrick at the end. Uh, Patrick made up for dropping a pass last week and then uh, not hauling that one in in the end zone, which probably wasn't a catch. Uh, I uh, thought it was a really catch. Up play. I thought it was I a know. catch. I thought the Latimer – not the Latimer, sorry. Same number. The Cortland Sutton – play it was a catch i didn't think Tim Patrick. Uh, was a catch. see i think the sutton one was less of a catch interesting yeah so yeah. sutton and patrick both maybe caught touchdown passes on the left sideline of the end zone right uh patrick's he catches the ball and you know falls out of bounds and maybe the ball comes loose or whatever right that was kind of like your does he have possession or not i thought yeah. he did and then sutton catches the ball and his foot is inbounds, but it like skids out and you don't know if his toe touches the the line or if it popped up over the line. So both very close calls. The refs ruled neither one of them was a goddamn touchdown. So two rookies who would have caught their first NFL meaningful touchdown taken away. Um, Royce Freeman scored a touchdown after the Tim Patrick uh, play, mm-hmm. but the Broncos had to settle for a field goal after Sutton's was uh, erased. So some some points left on the board for the Broncos. Even in a, a bad offensive day, you could say the Broncos should have scored ten more points that game. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, no, yeah, that's, it should have been like a thirty twenty victory, even with the Broncos playing bad. That's the positive spin on it. The yeah, absolutely should have been. Um, yeah, you get the sense that like this offense is not reaching its full potential right now, which is okay because they're still winning. Um, But they're not sabotaging themselves with the offensive line again. Like, even Jared Valdir came out uh, late in the game, and I was a little worried just because he's been, you know, one of the best right tackles so far. Right. And Billy Turner did a pretty good job. Yeah. I kept the Raiders from getting really any pass rush on that last drive. Yeah, Billy Turner – That's kind of an under-the-radar keep for the Broncos uh, on the offensive line. And was it last season, like, he came in to play some right tackle and broke his hand? Or was that the season before? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it was last year, and he was looking like decent right tackle. This was when the Broncos had nothing there. But he played like a half a game and broke his hand, and so you just didn't really get to see whether he could do it. So – the, the depth and knowing, like, if Bowles or, or Valdir needs to come out for a while, you've got a guy that can stay on par and, and, and keep Keenum protected. And the Broncos did a good job for the second week in a row, keeping the pocket clean. Keenum had time to throw it. Again, I don't think the, de- the Raiders' defensive front is very good, and I don't think Seattle's is either. So I'm still not sure exactly how good the Broncos' line is. Um, We'll, we'll learn more, I think, this weekend when they play the Ravens, who do have a, a good defensive front. Um, but my concern is that the team is just a little bit above average team right now. Uh, yeah, I think that's fair. I'm not sure if they're, they can be very – or if they are very good. I have concerns about the, the defense's ability – to play against the pass. Uh, I think the Broncos have done a pretty good job against the the run. Um, although, you know, Marshawn Lynch was – he was effective on first downs, and that's the reason, like, the Raiders had a lot of success early is they were in, like, second and short. But Derek Carr only missed three passes. Now, he didn't have a huge day. It was 288 yards. So you're going to take that probably almost any Sunday. Like, you hold the, the a passer to 280 yards, like – 
your team's going to have a chance to win. But the fact that there are only three misses and that receivers, on they looked open a lot. It wasn't like receivers making great contested catches all day. There was wide open plays. At least five times I remember look, like asking myself, who the fuck's supposed to be covering this player because I don't know. And maybe that's just a product of the defense switching more to zone schemes and them getting split between the zones. Like, I don't know. I don't know enough about the logistics of the defense, but I do have concerns about how they're going to cover more talented uh, uh, receiving groups. Yeah, no, the Joe Woods was playing the corners off really, really far, and it didn't look like it was working No, because the Raiders were just picking them apart with quick passes, and they didn't ever adjust, it seemed like. Um, you saw Tr- Tremaine Brock get turned around by Amari Cooper once on an out route. He literally just got yeah. turned around, put in a blunder. And Adam Jones got uh, lost, basically, on a dig route again, uh, where Cooper had a big gain, like 30 yards or something. So, yeah, they, it, was, it felt like um, schematically things were, things were not right against the Raiders. And also they just couldn't keep up sometimes with, with good routes. And Amari Cooper ended up going – coming. he had like one of his worst performances in week one to one of his best games as a pro, I think. Yeah, he had, what, 11 yesterday. catches, I think, over – Yeah, something like that. Over 100, 100 yards. yards. Yep. Um, yep. They, yep. They, they did all right against uh, the guy everybody was worried about, um, Jared Cook. Jared Cook. Yeah. Cooper, 10 catches, 116 yards, uh, zero TDs, though. That Seth Roberts touchdown pass was just a great throw by, by Derek mm-hmm. Carr. Like, that, yeah. was, that was a throw you see some quarterbacks try to make, and it just gets fucking picked off. But it was right between Chris Harris and Justin Simmons – who had decent position on, on Seth Roberts. So when you see that, there's like, there's not a lot you can do about that touchdown, but a lot of the other plays, something needs to get fixed. And uh, Adam Jones declined from his week one performance. Tremaine Brock was out there more, but yeah, he was getting, he, I saw him definitely get turned around a few times. Uh, Justin Simmons led the team in tackles. Um, So defense, it's uh, kind of half and half. Like, I'm excited about the yep. front seven, not as excited about the back end. And, again, just not having a keep to leave there is the Broncos got to figure out how to play without him. And I don't know if they're going to be able to uh, replace – I don't know if they're going to be able to fix that this season, I guess is my concern. Yeah, no, it feels like kind of to your point earlier, like they're 2-0. and They beat two – probably not very good teams at home to start the year. It feels like a team with some holes, but a team that's going to be like really, really good next year. I feel like the Broncos. Yeah. I think there's a chance they could compete and they could get a wild card spot this year, but it seems like a team that's built to succeed like in a year or two from now, just because of how many good rookies they have. Yeah. The going to get better and kind of some veterans are going to be, whether they stay or go is going to have a big impact. But And regardless of the quarterback situation, too, I think they're going to be a really good team in the future. Don't know yet. Don't know yet if they're going to be good this year. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot that's got to come together. Um, and obviously, Case Keenum needs to be safer with the ball. Only yeah. one pick, so an improvement there. But and he ran for a touchdown. Let's I, that. Said, I said I wanted zero interceptions for Keenum. He did run for a touchdown, and that was a great play call, I thought, by Bill Musgrave. The announcers were fucking ripping it. Yeah, Even, like, the Broncos oh, yeah. score a touchdown, and the first thing they do is, like, I don't like that call. I don't like – what the fuck are you talking about? It was a brilliant <laughs> call. Like, worked. you know, they – like, I got nervous when I saw Philip Lindsay – leave the backfield I'm like oh fuck they're definitely throwing it on fourth and inches but that was part of the plan Keenum like he just does the look where he sells he's gonna throw and then he has the lane there I love that that play call more than like trying to do a oh yeah Royce Freeman the play before that it was a, a handoff to Freeman from the one and he just he leapt for the end zone way too early 
I felt like he was in the air, and even if nobody was there, he was going to fall down short of the goal line and have to, like, stumble in. So I think uh, if he times his jump a little better, maybe uh, he gets that next time. But that's why the Broncos uh, had to take that risk on fourth and inches, and it paid off. And later in the game, the Raiders on fourth and inches try to throw to their fullback, and he sure drops, work. <laughs> drops an easy pass. He would have picked up the first down. Yeah. Um, I don't know what Bradley Chubb was doing on that play. If you saw the replay, like Chubb was supposed to be covering Keith Smith, and then he, Chubb like turned around at the last second to go like go out and cover Jose Feliciano, the offensive lineman who was eligible. Oh, okay. and he's lucky that he dropped it because if he had stayed on him, he probably would have tackled him uh, and prevented the first down. But if he had caught it, he would have run for a long, a long way. It's a first down yeah. for sure. Well, he's a rookie; he's got to learn. Uh, yeah, he's got to get better. Got to pick but, up assignments. I but concerned. I mean, I would not have expected. Tim Patrick, uh, Philip Lindsay, and um, I mean, even Chubb's playing a lot. That's three rookies yeah. making impact. Jake Butt's not a rookie, technically, but he's getting more involved in the passing game. So that's another positive. And I think as he develops, the offense will be better. Um, mm-hmm. He had four catches, I think, for 48 yards. He might have been the four or five catches. He might have been the, he was the second leading receiver four, on the team. Yeah. Uh, and it sucks to bring this up, but Demarius Thomas had a bad drop in the fourth quarter on the Broncos uh, game winning drive. Uh, his drop would have been a big play that set the Broncos up for at least a field goal. Luckily, a play or two later, Tim Patrick got them into field goal range, but DT was open. The ball hit him in his hands and he dropped it again. And it's just like, it's I'm I try to stay positive on Demaryius Thomas because I think he gets unfairly criticized for a lot of things, but yeah. then he does do this. Like you cannot ignore the fact that he has drops, and sometimes they happen at important t- points <laughs> in the game. You know what I mean? Like from time to time, defending Trevor Simeon uh, and the bad quarterbacks for the Broncos or even Peyton Manning when he was playing bad, like I put a lot on drop passes on receivers and a a, a continuing theme has been Demaryius Thomas has been a part of that. But, uh, and Emmanuel Sanders, they didn't have him involved in the the passing game early. I don't know if that's just like, there was a bunch of three and outs to start that game. So opposite of what we saw the week before. um, And I think that's just not getting a rhythm going. So that's probably why Sanders wasn't getting looks early, but, uh, the look when we'll talk about the Broncos Ravens matchup, but that's going to be interesting to think about because I think these are two teams who you still don't really know who they are. Great week one performances and then sputtered week two. Luckily, the Broncos played the, the Raiders, the Ravens played the Bengals and got worked um, on a short week. But uh, the Broncos are going to have a, a bigger challenge for their first road game against a, a much yeah. more complete team, I think. Yeah, it's always tough, too, because I'm assuming that that's an early game, too, on the East Coast. And it, it feels like they always lose their first like early, early East Coast game of the year, no matter what. Hard to say. Them, but I don't know. After seeing the Ravens last week, I'm a little more confident just because they're right. definitely not as good as the team that beat the Bills 47-3. to right. um, Also, yeah, we get to see – we get to see what they are uh, for sure. Uh, one question for you. What did you think about Bruce Arians in the booth with uh, Greg Gummel and Trent Green? Oh, I didn't even realize that was him, actually. Yeah. Uh, because since I live streamed the first half of the game, like I'm not really listening to the announcers. Oh, true. Um, and then I'm so busy like writing notes and working on like putting the game together the second half because I didn't even – acknowledge it uh i only person i recognized was greg gumbel's voice so uh and like i said when they criticized that fourth down run to keenum i was like you guys are fucking idiots that's my, i mean that's <laughs> my, what i thought at the time but i do like greg gumbel what do you think of him was he did he do a good job or is he uh, I'm not a, i like bruce arians the coach and potentially the person i don't really know him but i don't think he is very good at announcing football games like he doesn't have he just feels like they tossed him in with Trent Green and and Greg Gumble, who work perfectly together. We have like this very similar 
personalities and and they kind of mesh together pretty well and then bruce arians is just this like I third wheel they, third yeah wheel. basically a third wheel who they just like took off the street who kind of interrupts them a little bit and doesn't quite have the rhythm down and doesn't have a good broadcasting voice and was basically sucking off his pal john gruden for most of the game and he was pretty critical of the broncos i gotta say maybe that has okay. a little bit to do with uh my thoughts on him but not a huge fan of the Bruce Arians experience. So Sorry, far. Bruce. You're on our shit list, dude. <laughs> Take Gruden's side. Gruden, one in 10 against the Broncos now. Very bad. Uh, they have, they've got holes on that team. A lot of them yes. are defensive. Um, Philip Lindsay, first rookie to have 100 plus scrimmage yards in his first two starts. That's a crazy, that seems insane yeah. to me. Like, first undrafted rookie. Oh, first undrafted rookie. Yeah. Okay. First undrafted rookie to do that. Um, are you – like, I'm excited at how good Philip Lindsay looks, but are you a little worried that Philip Lindsay looks like the best running back for the Broncos? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, Royce Freeman, just like he looked kind of – he doesn't look very good at the beginning of games. Like, he, he turned it on, obviously, in the second half of that Seattle game. And he had a couple big runs, including the touchdown in the second half of the Raiders game. But he did not do really anything in the first half of either of those games. And that kind of worries me. Yeah, I mean, his touchdown run was uh, in, like was good because the Broncos have missed yeah, being able to <laughs> pound it in from one yard out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, they could, they, but then again, he did jump too early that second time. So... Yeah, I want to see. I want to see more from Freeman. Um, he had that great run though, where Bruce Irvin had him locked up in the backfield for like a three-yard loss, and he just kind of jab stepped him and then yeah ran outside. And Is that the one where he bounced out to the left or to the right on third and one? To the right. Okay, the so right. that I think that was that third and one play. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um, but My, no, I mean he's he's done. He's looked good, but in the preseason it looked like he was going to bust off, you know, a twenty-yard yeah. touchdown. Uh, here and there uh, that's been yep. what, what Philip Lindsay's doing so yeah maybe it would be good to see some more from Freeman but the Broncos young guy is performing has got to be the thing that you're most excited about heading forward you know what I mean um, absolutely the yeah. the big question is so because they took Cortland Sutton and on the board was Josh Jackson a, a, a corner that everybody a lot of people were high on and that seems like uh, the uh, position area they should have addressed earlier, but the guys that they did take early are contributing. So it's hard to say right. like what the Broncos should have done in the draft. But when young guys contribute, especially for the Broncos who have not had great luck with the draft, I think that's the, the biggest plus uh, and the thing yeah. that's going to keep me optimistic heading forward. It felt like Cortland Sutton had a really good game, even though he ended up with like one catch for nine yards. Just because yeah, he should have had he three catches. With. Yeah. He got interfered with on touchdown, and uh, he also dropped like a, a sideline pass, or he couldn't yeah. hold it. Um, he just needs to get more targets, I think. Right, and I think he will. I mean, Demarius Thomas got a ton of targets, and he only ended up with like 18 yards, which was not uh, the best showing from him. Obviously, like you said, he had that drop at the end, but it, it just looks more and more like Emmanuel Sanders is the number one wide receiver on this team at least for the time being. No, he is right now for sure. He's about Um, the most reliable offensive weapon that they have. No, I agree. I think uh, the biggest weakness right now is kind of the secondary. And there's depth at receiver. Offensive line looks good. Keenum, if he stops throwing picks, I mean, he he shows when he throws a pick, he's not going to let it bother him, which is huge. But uh, if Keenum starts playing just a little bit better – uh, I'm really excited about the offense. Um, right. So we'll see what that means moving forward. We'll talk about the the next game in Thursday's podcast. Uh, if anything comes up this week, we'll we'll address it. But I feel like we've touched on all the points. Is there anything we're missing? Pretty the much. Broncos? Special teams, McManus clutch, we touched on that. Oh, oh one Mar- thing. Go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, Marquette King posted a really weird fucking video. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, that so was strange. I thought he's going like, to kick the doll or something. Yeah, look at uh, Marquette King's Twitter if you need a, just to feel weird for 30 yeah. seconds. 
I was just going to say that uh, that decision to cut D'Angelo Henderson and keep Devontae Booker is not looking so good. Yeah. That's not so good. And is, is David Williams still on the practice squad? Yeah. Yeah, he might be – that might be an area you make a move at because – Booker, I mean, I don't know how many looks Williams would get or carries, but I feel like he has more to offer as an actual running back than Devontae Booker. Um, the other thing, Sha- Shaq Barrett's blocked extra point, key, clutch, yeah. said we yeah. want to see him get more reps. I don't know how much he played this game, but I felt like I saw him more. And I have I apologize to Domita Pecco because I said Shelby Harris should be the starting nose tackle. And then Pecco just had a, a fucking he had a great game. He just he was like in, he was always by the ball. He was getting pressure. He had a, a he fumbled he recovered a fumble that didn't stand because of a penalty they didn't show on Todd Davis. Miller, Von Miller gets another sack. Should have had two. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was getting uh, held too. He was getting yeah basically strangled by Donald Penn every other play. I saw that. They did not call it at all. Like his his yeah. arm was like around Von Miller's fucking neck. So Raiders did a good their offensive line did a better job at protecting Derek Carr. So uh Broncos pass rush uh not only one sack didn't look nearly as good and Carr had time to to make a lot of his throws. It's a good offensive line though. It really you is. No, it is. Like yeah, That's what we said. It's going to be a bigger test yeah. for the Broncos. Uh, I predicted four sacks, so I was only – I was – 25% correct. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. That's what I shoot for, 25% accuracy. So, mm-hmm. thanks for listening to the Broncos and NFL Monday quick recap podcast. We put in half the effort for half your attention. 25%. Okay, we're going to leave.